the electrolysis tank. We built a base using 4x4s and lag bolts. Here you can see the base upside down with the legs and the top frame. Next we built the framing for the walls and covered that with 3 quarter inch plywood. We supported the tank around the perimeter and under the center beams with concrete block. We had an old side wall from a swimming pool to pad the sides and the bottom. Then we added a plastic liner. We doubled two big sheets of four mil plastic. In time to fill it. The foam eventually settled. I've also put rubber mats on the floor inside the tank on top of the liner. This will help guard against puncturing the bottom. This is Arm & Hammer Super Washing Soda. This is sodium carbonate. This is not baking soda. This is not borax. There is a difference. We're powering it with a battery charger set on our lowest 12 volt setting, which on this one happens to be 15 amps. The tank will normally run about 10 volts. We built a shelf to house the battery charger from pieces of bed frame and a piece of plywood. It's anchored to the wall with concrete anchors. Quite sturdy. We wired in a GFI outlet just to keep it safe. And a light switch with a light above the tank so we can see what we're doing. But the light is off to the side of the tank and close to the wall up by the ceiling so we won't hit it with anything metal. We also use a fluorescent bulb partially for that reason. We constructed a frame using 2 by 2s This frame sits on top of the tank and holds our electrodes, which are made from rebar that we welded a bolt to the top of and bolted up through this wood frame. The nut on the end of this bolt gives us a place to attach the wires and the clamp. The negative lead from the battery charger attaches to the part. I've used a secondary wire to connect the part to a junction block. This way the secondary wire will be getting dissolved rather than the clamp on the battery charger. The positive lead gets connected to the rods, which are wired in series. We use a multimeter to check the connections and verify our current and voltage. Our overhead pulley system uses a 2x4 across two bed frames. The 2x4 has aluminum blocks placed at each end that slide along in between the two rails. The idea is to set the part into the tank, but not have it touching the bottom. You don't want to puncture the liner. 
So far we've successfully suspended doors, fenders, and a hood from a 65 Dart. Here's the tank in operation. Solution's getting a little grubby, but that's okay. It still works good. You can see it bubbling a little in the middle. This process does create hydrogen. Ensure you operate this only in a well-ventilated area, preferably outside. Be careful of smoking and fire, open flame, fire, static shock, sparks, fire, anything else that may set off a hydrogen explosion. You just don't want to be the first one to blow up your block. After the part comes out of the tank, you'll want to scrub vigorously with a brush or pressure washer. This will remove converted surface rust. It won't be shiny, it should be black, but this is now converted rust. At this point, you should dry it off immediately using whatever you can, a fan, air, compressed air, put it in the sun, wipe it with towels. Ensure that it's dry. I usually like to let the part sit for a day. Then I'll wipe it down with a chemical called Ospho. This eliminates flash rust and it keeps your metal from flash rusting for weeks. Uh, possibly even longer depending on your climate. This is a hood from a 65 Dart that we had in the tank halfway submerged for approximately one day. Then we flipped it around, submerged the other half for a day. We pulled it out of the tank and rinsed it off with 2800 PSI pressure washer. We found this does a much better job than the brush. Time for the primer. And... Prime. There you have it.